well, hi everyone and good morning. My name is Emine Uluçay. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to thank the whole Morning Talks team for inviting me over to give this talk. Uh, well, I will be talking to you about how to feed your body and feed your soul and hopefully to be able to shine inside out, so to be happy holistically. Uh, well, I am, some of you know me already, but there are people who don't know me and I, I think there might be people who are looking at me and thinking, what on earth can this 20-year-old girl have achieved to kind of give this talk today? Well, firstly, I can reassure you, I'm unfortunately much older than 20. And two, I don't really know what I have achieved, to be honest. But since we're all here, I'll, I'll try to make it as interesting as I can. Uh, so it's all worth for all of us. So I want to start with a bit of a background. Uh, I studied, I graduated from Human Nutrition and Dietetics about three years ago from the London Metropolitan University in London. Um, now I work, well since then I've been working in healthcare. So what I basically do is I help people to lose weight or gain weight, but it's not limited with that because what we usually do is uh, we help those with chronic illnesses such as diabetes and cardiac stuff to, to, uh, to, to kind of learn how to eat. Um, so at the moment I currently have two part-time jobs. I, one of them is in a private hospital in Nicosia in the north side and the other one is all around North Cyprus where uh, we basically teach young basketball players about healthy nutrition as part of an EU funded project uh, which is a joint program of the Turkey Cypriot Dietetic Association with Peace Players International Cyprus which their office is actually located upstairs as well. And apart from that I also work for a uh, private company where we write the monthly menus for the government jail. So that was an interesting uh, experience for me as well. So uh, apart from my money-making activities I also train for triathlons and for those of you who don't know what a triathlon is, is it is a sport where you swim, bike and run uh, one after another and one, when I usually tell people about this the question I get is so do they all happen on the same day? Yes they do and a matter of fact the transition from say swimming to cycling or from cycling to swimming is a competition because you can actually lose or win a race while you transit from one uh, thing to another. So by the time you get out, out of the water, you already have to kind of unzip your wetsuit while you run, taking off your cap and goggles to change into your cycling gear. So it's like all full, full throttle. And this is a small quote that I really like. It says, a triathlete is a person who doesn't uh, understand that one sport is enough is good enough and I think this is very true because once you do a triathlon nothing is really nothing really satisfies you uh, they sometimes make me run or just swim I don't really get the same euphoric feeling I would get when I do a triathlon so yes uh, among juggling two part-time jobs a contract job and triathlon I also make time to work on the Cypria.com which is a lifestyle blog I co-founded co with a very good friend of mine who is now living in uh, Istanbul and is also a dietitian, Aisha. Well, the idea to start the blog had been there for a long time, but it wasn't really kicked off until a lot of friends of ours uh, really encouraged us to do so because we were going on about it for a very long time. So I think they were very bored in the end and they said, just, you know what, just do it. Uh, yeah, from the beginning, we had this motto of shine inside out, which is how this talk came through actually. And uh, we honestly think, as like, both me and Aisha, that to be able to be uh, happy inside and out, yes, it's very important to eat healthily, have a balanced diet and a healthy diet, but it's also at least as important to have, to have the time, to make the time 
to spend on those things that you really like doing and that you're passionate about. And this might be different for everybody else. Uh, for, for us, the main aim was to inspire others, to inspire those people who log on to our Instagram account or our Facebook or randomly just bump into our website online, to inspire them to live healthily uh, and by showing them that, can, that, that they can actually do this by giving real life examples. So what we usually do on our Instagram account, if there's anybody who ever saw the pictures and stuff, uh, we, we post daily uh, breakfast photos, for example. And they're usually, 99% of the time, they're healthy stuff. Uh, so it is, in a way, in my mind, to inspire those who see it to at least try to move from what they would eat usually, which might be something a bit less healthy, to a healthier version, which they hopefully see. Uh, as I said, because being healthy is not just eating healthy, we also, uh, among sharing the healthy recipe, recipes on the blog, we also share um, some outfit photos, which the guys are not really interested in, but it's more like a girl's thing. And we also share thoughts and like suggestions from those places, bars, restaurants, I don't know, cafes we visit and we really like, to the places we travel to. For example, we went to Uludal a couple of months ago. Oh, it's been two months now, yeah. And we spent quite a lot of time devising an Uludal guide. guide. By the way, Uludal is a mountain city in Turkey where people ski. It was my first time and I suck big time, but it's okay. I'll make it better next time. Uh, so yeah, we now have a guide on the blog. So if you ever wanted to go to Uludağ, the guide can actually take you from A, your house, to B, to Uludağ, and all the way back, because you can read about what to wear, where, where to buy, what to wear, and how much we paid for the tickets, for transportation and everything. So we're trying to kind of show that it's not really that hard to travel. We went, I think we were seven girls, we didn't ever get lost, we didn't lose anything, nobody break a leg, broke a leg, so I think it was okay. Yes, from the scientific side of things, going back to eating, because that's what I usually speak about in my daily life anyway, uh, we now know, well science tells us, that overweight and obesity are mainly linked to emotional eating as well as genetic and metabolic disorders. And, well, what I see in my own outpatient clinics, as well as my other colleagues tell me, most people now, most dieters, let's say, they know what to do. They know that they shouldn't be eating as much, as much cake, as much biscuits or crisps, and then they're perfectly aware that they shouldn't be drinking as much alcohol or coke. But they cannot do it. They fail. Does anybody have any ideas why they cannot, even though they know that they shouldn't? Yes? Stress. Yes, stress is one of them. Uh, as I said, emotion, emotion drives a lot of stuff within us. And um, unfortunately, that kind of eating, it's not driven by hunger, physical hunger or greediness, as most of us would think. Most of us perceive uh, ob obese people to be greedy. I think they're not. And science also tells us, evidence tells us that they're not. So what we or those people, and I think everybody does this even if we don't admit it at times, we try to fill that gap within us, the emotional gap, with food. By pushing the food down our throats, we think we're going to fill that gap. But unfortunately, the truth is, we can't, and we will never be able to fill that hole in with food. Uh, we will only make it deeper, bigger, and hollower, because as the more we eat, the more weight we gain, and the more weight we gain, the unhappier we will be eventually. And then that's probably going to be follow, followed by social isolation, and everything's going to be uh, the opposite of what we really want it to be. So this is... Uh, again, what we try to emphasize through the blog, that it's not just healthy eating you should be concentrating on. 
you should make time to, to do those things that you're really passionate about because it is vital for your happiness and a slimmer waistline in the end, I think. Uh, so, yes, we spoke about passion. Uh, it's not always very easy though because when we started the blog, I was working full time and that was 96, 9 to 6 weekdays and 9 to 2 on Saturdays, training at least an hour and a half every day, sometimes twice a day. So there were days when I would wake up at 6 a.m. and with the help of my boyfriend, go and take some photo shoots before I could change and go to work. Or when I would again do the same thing with the help of my friend in the evening before I got to training. Or when I got home to kind of take some recipe pictures because I, before I could just hop on the bike and make it to the bike session. So it's not always easy, but I honestly think that if you want to do something, you make the time for it. If you don't want it enough, you will make excuses for it. So it's very important to, to kind of know how much you want something. And again, it all, it all sounds like sparkly and nice, but there are the downsides of it too. And uh, well, when, peop when I usually tell people all this stuff, they go to me, Amina, how on earth do you fit everything in a single day? Or how on earth do you have find the energy to do this, everything? Uh, well, it's first, it's will, because I think when, when there's a will, there's a way. And the second is, well, it's planning, it's planning and prioritizing. Because if you don't plan your time and if you don't prioritize stuff, there's no way you're going to get it done. Uh, but saying that, as I said, there's always like the downside of things as well. There are days where I feel like everything gets out of control and I just want to shout and scream and break down and cry. But I think that's also okay because, well, on days like that, I turn to Aisha, the, the, my friend that we ran the blog with, and I turn to other people that I know that are there to help me. And I think this is also a very important uh, brick of success. To know our limits and to know what we can achieve, but also to know what we can, when we need help. Because most people usually miss that point because we usually perceive um, needing help or asking for help as, as a sign of weakness when actually I think it's a strength because it's knowing what we're capable of and at the same time knowing what we're not capable of and kind of try to balance each one out. So going back to the blog uh, and the time constraints and everything, to be honest with you, and uh, probably this is the only... This is probably the first time I'm going to voice it to somebody other than Aisha. Our biggest problem was, and the biggest uh, barrier was, apart from time, what on earth are people going to think of us as two established dietitians when they see us posing for outfit pictures? And well, uh, that was a very big issue because I'm not sure you might or might not understand it's not easy to run a blog in a small country where everybody knows each other and where everybody has their own perceptions about each other. So we started off from a point where we were like, uh, do you know what, we're not models. We don't have to, it's okay if we can't pose. What we can do, we take pictures down our neck showing our, just like the outfit. So we just leave the heads to a point where we can actually wrap up uh, photo shoots in less than 15 minutes now. But of course, this didn't really come all naturally. I still spend a good amount of time staring at outfit photos of those bloggers that I, that I admire, trying to find what works and what doesn't. And I, for me, the thrill of this whole thing was to try to push myself to do something that I thought I couldn't. Because I would never on earth think that I could kind of pause in a modelly way trying to show some picture, uh, some outfits. And I still am not 100% satisfied of how I look in them or how I kind of turn or position myself. 
So there is the strive is still there to kind of improve myself, to work hard every day to improve myself. And one other thing I want to say is that I'm not sure if you realize it or not. Since the beginning of my talk, I never used labels such as I'm a dietitian or I'm a triathlete or I'm a blogger. Because I think that the moment we label ourselves or others as something, we instantly add uh, expectations to them and to ourselves either uh, as well, both willingly and unwillingly. In my head, it was very hard to work when I would think of myself as being somebody, a dietitian, let's say. Because in my mind, they didn't and they still don't overlap the three things. Because I, they don't overlap because I don't know anyone who has a, a, a professional health career, who does hardcore sports and who, is a life, who blogs about lifestyle. So for me, the easiest thing was to just accept myself as Emina, who just happens to have chosen dietetics as a profession, who loves food and feeling the uttermost pain tr through triathlons, and also uh, that is passionate about uh, experiencing, exploring and traveling. And I think I was very, very lucky to have a friend that shares most of these passions with me, except the triathlon, she doesn't really like the physical pain, uh, to kind of create a platform where we can both share what we really like with others, with other people who would really like us to share it. And uh, we, alongside our day jobs, let's say, uh, well, I think it's also kind of important to point out that Aisha is still working part-time and she lives in Istanbul, so she she spends on average th three hours a day, apart from her work, traveling in a day. So that's a lot of time gone. We manage within all these to create a digital platform where we can showcase our creativity, our productivity, and anything, and share anything that inspires us with other people. And I think this is very, very powerful uh, because the social media is there and it shouldn't just be Facebook or Instagram that we check or log on to, because I think it's a very powerful tool and we should actually use it to produce stuff, to be productive. And through the blog, even though, well, even though it's not yet where we want it to be, I'm pretty sure it will be, because I haven't really had anything in my life yet that I really wanted and I didn't achieve. And I'm not saying because I'm talented, it's because I work very hard. Uh, it did make us learn a lot of stuff. For example, in less than nine months, because it was in July last year when we launched it, I, I learned how to use a DSLR camera. I had no idea how to do so. I can now edit photos, although I'm not perfect at it. I'm, much, I'm way better than I was. Uh, I, we have improved our writing skills and the way we express, express ourselves greatly. And we met a lot of people that we wouldn't otherwise have, which I think it's one of the most important things. I honestly think that everything has a reason and it might not be as big as, it, as we want it to be yet, but it's definitely taking us to the place we want to be. And yes, so as a triathlete, let's say I'm using the label now, triathlon taught me a lot of stuff, but the main thing is probably not to give up because there are times when your feet bleed during a race, when you think you're dying from like, sometimes even hunger. Sometimes I get hungry. When, uh, when a race lasts six and a half hours, I get hungry. So you have to keep going no matter how hard or how rough or how tough the times are. And I think the most important of all is to keep going when others give up. Because only then you have a chance, and I'm not saying you're going to be successful, there is a chance that you might succeed. And yes, the last point I want to make, this is a bit personal to me. Last week, it was the first time that I was first in Turkey in a race, in a Turkey, in a Turkey championship. And again, the take home point for me from this was that you should dare to dream and you should dare to dream big. 
because I can't tell you how many times before the race I visualized crossing the, start, uh, the finish line first. It scared me. Even the thought of it was scary because when you think of it, you kind of believe that you will do it. And the thought of not being able to do it once I believed it would freak me out. But I thought, okay, just do it. If it works out, it works out. If it doesn't work out, you make it work out. So yeah, I dreamt about it, I visualized it, and I did it. And yeah, so the point I wanna make is, just don't think about what others would think of the things you dream about, because usually they don't think that way. It's you yourself that think that other people will see it that way. It's our perceptions. We have our own values about ourselves in our mind, and we think that other people think us that way too, which is usually not, because we are the ones that are the harshest usually on ourselves. So just find what really inspires you, what really makes you happy, what is really your passion, and dream for it, work for it every single day and make it happen. There will be people who will tell you that you cannot do it, like it's not gonna work out, or there's gonna be yourself deep down there that's gonna say, do you know what, you don't have time, you're not good enough, or anything like that, but it's not true. Because when you want it very badly, and when you work for it very hard, it's bound to happen. And I wanna finish with my favorite quote of the time, which actually got me through the finish line to, uh, at the race as well. I was constantly keeping, uh, thinking about this quote, and Dobro Dien in Russian, which means good afternoon. I have no idea where that came from to my mind, but it was th these two sentences that I had in my mind during the race. And I really think it's a very powerful quote. It says, whether you, can, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So basically, it's all up to you. It's all in the mind. If you think you can do it, you will do it. If not, you will not. So thank you for your time and for listening. And uh, that was my, the end of my talk. <laughs>